anytime there is news, it's not even really news from the CW. It's, you know, someone predicting whether, like, which shows are going to go forward. Like, Deadline just put out, um, which shows are on the bubble in the CW section has us a little shook. Like, I'm not going to lie. I mean, 4400 is one of the most vulnerable. We knew that. Dynasty is one of the most vulnerable. We knew that. And yet, I don't like seeing it in print. No. <laughs> It hurts my heart. <laughs> I know. Just, I, like, don't tell us that. But also, again, Dynasty fans, we're on the hashtag Renew Dynasty train. So hashtag Renew Dynasty everything on Twitter until you can get it trending. <laughs> yes, join us. It's it's weird, though, to me because it feels like Dynasty has been, quote unquote, on the bubble since its first season. Like, it's never been a ratings grabber, but because of the international audience and Netflix and everything, it's managed to last until its fifth season and hopefully more. But it's so weird that this season, everyone, like all these like articles and predictions and everyone's like, oh, this could be it for Dynasty. And I'm like, I don't know what has changed. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like Mm -hmm. ratings are stable-ish. They're low, but it's no different. I don't know why it's this season everyone's like, ready to throw dynasty away i'm like why are you counting it out when it's it's in its fifth season does anybody realize that (laughs) yeah and speaking as someone who's literally been watching it on netflix over the last couple of weeks thanks to that international deal in place it it has been really popular on a worldwide basis i i I don't i think it's safe to say it was never a cw hit but the show itself is a hit as far as it goes with fans. And apparently I've seen that it, over the years it's ranked in Netflix's top 10 quite regularly. It is a huge Netflix hit, regardless of whether it's a hit on the CW. And this kind of goes back to what me and Sabrina were talking about last week and that if a show is a hit worldwide, one network shouldn't get to decide its fate. Only, oh, with that, only that network, more has to go into that. And maybe that's why Dynasty's taken so long to renew. I don't think CW has the only say here, but if they are making money off that lucrative Netflix deal, why would you scrap it? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. That's why I don't want to be scared for Dynasty. Because, I mean, like, we know that it is at least successful on streaming. Again, it may, and, um, it's lucrative. Why would we decide to cut off that bag? I mean, you could at least final season it. And at least um, fans will be able to finish a story. It might not be the complete story that the writers wanted, but at least it wouldn't be like a cancellation. And therefore, Fallon's story doesn't get any type of ending. And to me, it's like, how desperately do you need that Friday at 9 p.m. time slot? Like, what other show are they going to put there? Like, mm-hmm. do you do? Does the CW desperately need that time slot open? Like, what is Dynasty not doing that? Are you going to put? charmed there like it's just gonna drop charms ratings lower i don't know it's just mind-boggling to me like i don't i I just don't know what to make of that because for the past few seasons i've never been worried about dynasty even though the ratings are low and everyone's like oh dynasty is gonna be gone it's like she's still here i don't know what to tell you so i kind of with all the um just having confidence in the cw how they brought back all of their shows i've never been concerned about it which is i guess a luxury <laughs> <laughs> to like be confident in a really low rated show but i i don't there's a disconnect for me i don't understand why people are so it's i don't know why they think it's in such huge danger right now i don't either unless of course um we are doing that thing where we're focusing entirely on ratings and not looking at the streaming side, which given what Mark Pettowitz said when the first shows were renewed in which they were talking about their digital strategy, I think everyone needs to be looking at both live ratings and streaming and to see whether or not streaming is high enough where live ratings may not matter when it comes to renewal. I know that is sort of going to be the bread and butter for Batwoman and um, Legends of Tomorrow. Because from what the article, the deadline article was saying, Charmed and Legacy are at a better spot than 4400 and Dynasty, but CW is really looking at which shows they want to carry over from the Arrowverse. And I am going to say I disagree with the point in in the the deadline article, which is that between Batwoman, Legends of Tomorrow, and Night Only, and and they mentioned Gotham Knights, only half of those shows are gonna make it to um, the 2022-2023 season. At least that's what they hear. I'm like, really? It's so it's between, so basically what you're saying, it's gonna be a veteran show and a new one. And obviously the new one's gonna be Gotham Knights. So 
we're going to be trying to duke it out between Batwoman Legends of Tomorrow and Naomi. That just doesn't seem like that's a good plan for the CW. Not to drag deadline though, but do they know what half means? (laughs) (laughs) They listed four shows and said half. So you really think only two are going to happen? I don't know, guys. Yeah. Um, I can't see. There, we're, we're very positive people. We're trying to champion every show on this network, but I cannot see anyone looking at the lineup of the CW shows and thinking, oh, I know a DC TV show has to go because even the lowest is still like quite high above some of the other shows on the network. Why does it have to be a battle between genre when this network has single-handedly built itself up over the last five, six, seven years as a superhero network? It shouldn't have to choose between what superhero shows it wants. Let's be honest, it can have all of them. It still can have all of them. They're all still solid performers. I will say Naomi is maybe most at risk, but then the thing working in its favor is that it's produced by Eva DuVernay, who I don't think they'll want to drop just yet. So I could see it getting a second chance, which may then put one of the other shows in jeopardy. But at the same time, those shows have established audiences, established viewership, and a massive, massive established fan base online. Very few shows on that network can generate the buzz that either one of Legends or Batwoman can. So to turn your back on them at this stage and this like era of flux you're in at the moment when you're trying to figure out what the future looks like for this TV network would be a silly, silly, no, a stupid idea. I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I mean, like when it comes to like shows, especially the shows that you love, you do get a little testy, um, especially when trying to discuss what shows will stay and which shows um, won't. And when you're thinking about, the, in this case, the future of the CW, it's like, why would you turn your back on shows that you know are going to draw in an audience, a stable audience of viewers who talk about the show all the time online. Um, Mm -hmm. And that therefore like has entertainment writers like us writing about the shows all the time, especially those of us who are fans of the show. And when I think about the pilots, okay, so if we, if some of these shows go, the pilots are going to be the ones that are put into this, to the roster um, instead of them. They still have audiences, even with them being, spinoffs or you know IP that's very popular that doesn't necessarily mean that the shows themselves were do well so how much how much risk does the whatever um station if it's next star decides to buy CW how much risk are they willing to have with a schedule by like tossing away shows that do well just need better promo Mm -hmm. yeah you're right because they would risk canceling established shows to bet on these three pilots that They don't know how they're going to perform. So then you dump a show with an established fan base and streaming uh, presence for three shows that might not hit. I don't know. And I think the CW more so than any network right now has a very um, stable foundation of veteran shows, like Mm -hmm. because they've bet on their shows and kept them around and doing their renewals all at once and everything. And, other networks just haven't been able to keep a lot of shows around for a very long time. There's like the handful, but a lot of new shows don't make it historically. And, but the CW has managed to be like, no, we're riding out these, this core group of shows. And it would be really difficult to see them cancel any of the shows that we've just talked about. I mean, besides 4,400, not to drag them, but it's a new show. (laughs) (laughs) No, I agree because, um, and I don't feel like this is a dragon. It's just the obvious statement. It's the new show um, besides Naomi. And Naomi at least has Ava DuVernay and is a DCIP. Um, 4400 is a reboot, uh, but I don't know how well the original did. Um, I don't remember it, but that doesn't mean anything. Just because you don't remember something doesn't mean other people don't. Yeah. But, um, I don't remember seeing any of the OG 4,400 fans riding for this new show. Um, It feels like the renewed 4,400 fervor has diminished, even though they should still be in the fight. Um, So when I think of which show CW would likely cut its losses with, it would be that one. Because it's not established. It's not an IP that a good portion of people are are, um, invested in. Um, And it's not a veteran. So I don't know. And I mean, Deadline did mention that um, Mark Pedowitz does like to final season his veteran shows. Mm -hmm. 
with the caveat that he that see, the network itself may not get to make that decision. But you know what? Nobody knows. And nobody actually knows who CW is getting sold to. Are you doing good? There's something's <laughs> happening outside and there was a noise that shook me. Sorry. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, should we like what's happening? Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So when it comes to like the sale, we don't know anything. None of the um, the uh, entertainment sites know anything. <laughs> we don't like we know that Nexstar is the front runner. We have no idea who else might be um, in the running, even if they aren't the front runner. We don't know what Nexstar's plans are. If they do get the network, we don't know what Warner Media um, and uh, Paramount are going to do if they divest of majority ownership, but still want to um, produce shows for. So you know what? It's a big old question mark, which is why I kind of just want to be like, it's 4,400, maybe one more show, which might get platformed on um, uh, HBO Max or something. I think if, if they're going to do that to one of the Arrowverse shows, it would be Naomi because mm-hmm. uh, it's new and it would work for that show. Yeah, it definitely has the like it has the it has the like glossy look that you'd expect from a streaming show. It looks like it's a bigger budget, a more condensed episode kind. It definitely looks like it would thrive maybe more on HBO Max than it would on the CW. So I hope I hope it performs well when it eventually goes there. But that that scope to think about for whether whether its second season would be a better fit for there. Um, and not to drag the article one more time, but that seems to be the theme we're going for. Um, the thing that stood out for me, and I do have to laugh at this because, again, we have to defend ourselves and say we are Riverdale fans. But Riverdale and Dynasty to me have already been have, are kind of in the same boat here. And like I, I do ha- have to have to laugh because like a season and a half into Dynasty and I'm like, bye, Riverdale. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, they're both in the same boat because they're not performing very well on the night, but they're both veteran shows, but they've both Netflix deals, which uh, make them perform very well worldwide. And that article said that the, the network renewed its strongest performers and threw Riverdale in there, which after three episodes, not 0.1 million something, uh, which was not good, uh, not good numbers. Uh, but Dynasty, which was performing better than Riverdale on a number of weeks, which also has his Netflix deal as being classed as being on the bubble and perhaps at risk. That, that, that doesn't make sense to me because, yes, I do get the fact that, yes, Riverdale ha- is bigger worldwide it's still got the safety net of that deal that Dynasty has to, too. Riverdale is not performing well anymore on the CW. It's not one of the network's biggest performers. And if you look at the, the weekly list of its top 10 performers or top 12, however many are on it during the week, Riverdale is constantly either bottom or second from bottom. And the one joining it there is Dynasty, the other Netflix show. So if, those de- if that deal has kept Dynasty safe or Riverdale safe for this long and has also kept Dynasty safe for this long, why wouldn't it continue to do so? If Netflix is willing to pay the money again, again for another year, the CW should not turn around and say, no, we're not going to take that deal and we're going to take a risk on a new show that won't perform well on Friday nights. That's not good business. So that to me is why Dynasty deserves and why it should probably be safe for another season. There it is. Love that. Love <laughs> that. That was a whole moment and it still was so much truth. <laughs> like, I know, those are imagine- facts. Very much back because like so like Riverdale performs well that's why we kept it but Dynasty does not and that's why we're not keeping it. it's like hypocrisy. <laughs> like, I think people are mistaking visibility for like performance just because Riverdale was really popular right mm-hmm. and the cast members got so famous and people still talk about the show mostly because the cast is so famous and it's really visible that show Dynasty is probably on par performance wise streaming and maybe now live ratings but because none of the cast i mean liz is really popular but like they're not like kj lily cole cammy like fame like that's they're enormous and i think it's a mistake to <laughs> say riverdale is such a strong performer it's like no it's just really visible like people mm-hmm. just talk about it more and that doesn't mean anything in the long run no, and okay, see, you mentioned that core, like Riverdale group, and they're that popular because that they got such a huge promotional push that Dynasty did not see. If Dynasty had gotten the same push, we, you know, we could be living in an era where we're talking about the Dynasty stars being just as big as them. Granted, Riverdale hit at just the right moment of like, there's a hole in teen television. Who's going to fill it? Like this Archie Comics, dark 
gritty version with serial killers and pretty people like running around a small town and it just you know it's perfect um but if dynasty is performing well and it's performing even better numbers than riverdale the new um dynasty like let's not play the game of riverdale's doing well the dynasty is not when the numbers are not saying like you're saying that but the numbers do not agree it don't add up 